What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp and Twilight Render rendering tutorial. And today we're going to come in here and we're going to model a wine glass and uh, render that object. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So uh, first thing I've done is I've come in here and I'm, I've downloaded an image of a wine glass off the internet and I just picked a random image. There's nothing special about the image that I picked. Um, but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to import that as a image. So what we're going to do is we're going to go find the image that we downloaded. So in this case, I've got this burgundy wine glass image. I'm just going to uh, make sure this little uh, button that says use image as image is checked. And I'm just going to double click on that to bring it into my model. And you can see how what that does is that brings your image in wherever your pointer goes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click once to start bringing this image in. And then uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to move my mouse until this is kind of an accurate size. So if you look in the corner, it gives you a width. So you just kind of want to think about um, how wide a wine glass is going to be. In this case, I'm just going to go with six inches for right now. And I'm actually going to go ahead and rotate this image so that it's kind of standing up on my, uh, on my axes. And that's just kind of a personal preference thing. I just prefer for things to be standing up um, when I work on them. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to use the, uh, the line and arc tools to come in here and um, to come in here and uh, basically trace the outline of this uh, glass. But what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to use the scale tool and I'm going to increase the size of this by about four times. So I'm just going to activate the scale tool, click on this and then uh, type in four and hit the enter key. And the reason I'm doing that is uh, when you come in here and you work with a lot of these uh, curves and stuff like that uh, you get a lot of uh, curves that go below SketchUp's minimum um, size for segment counts and radiuses and everything like that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna blow this up and then we'll shrink it back to normal later so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna come in here and remember that uh, to create an object like this we're gonna create a profile so if you were to like cut through a wine glass uh, right through the middle like this then we're going to draw that profile and then we're going to use a circle to extrude it to create our 3D object. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to um, basically trace over the perimeter of this object as best as I can. So and some of these are going to be straight objects, some of them are going to be more curved. And you may have to kind of segment this a little bit just to kind of make it work the way that you want it to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to use the offset tool to just kind of offset the outside of this shape. And um, so in this case, I'm just going to pick kind of a good profile in here for this. And then uh, I'm just going to kind of finish the shape off just by drawing a little half circle at the top here just like this, um, not even a half circle, but just enough to give this kind of a lip. You know, and then the other thing that you're gonna do, because remember, we're just kind of drawing this perimeter piece right here, and then what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll kind of close this off. Just like this, because the glass kind of, uh, the glass kind of turns up right here and you may want to come in here and uh, smooth that curve out a little bit um, just by drawing a little arc across that. I'm probably going to do the same thing up here because you don't really want things to go to a point. Um, you want this to kind of be nice and curved is what you want it to be. But you can see how what I've done is I've basically drawn the profile of my glass. And then I'm also going to come in here and I'm just going to draw a little line across here um, to create the profile of my... Uh, of my actual wine liquid that's going to go in here. What we're doing is we're giving this a thickness um, and then when we give it a thickness what will happen is uh, we'll set it to a glass material and it'll kind of refract. So next thing you're going to do is you're just going to come in here and actually I'm going to go ahead and group this piece and then I'll group these other pieces as well. So and then the other thing we're going to want to do is if you look at the way liquid works um, if you look at the way liquid works in a container, what it does is there's actually a piece on the perimeter, just like this, that uh, actually 
that actually comes in here and it kind of uh, stands up above the rest of the liquid. So you wanna make sure you model that as well. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and explode this object that I created, I'll erase this line, and then I'll uh, regroup it. Um, and the reason I'm regrouping this is to keep these two materials separate. You may not have to do that, but that's the way that I'm gonna come in here and do this. And so what you've got is you've got your two pieces in here, right? You've got your, uh, your wine glass, and then you've got your actual wine material. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna draw a circle at the top of this, just like this. And uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that this circle has a lot of different sides in it because you want this to be a pretty high polygon image because if you don't, then uh, it's gonna look kind of blocky when you render it. And so what you wanna do is you wanna come in here and you wanna create a circle with 96 sides off the top right here so that this, basically what that means is when it extrudes this in a circle, it's gonna create 96 little segments of this profile in here. Um, and so we're just making sure that that's really smooth. So I'm just gonna draw a 96 sided circle and then I'll select this circle like this, activate the follow me tool and I'll extrude this in a circle. And this may take a little while on slower computers. All right, so perfect. So once you've done this, you can come in here and you can erase back out your circle. So you can come in here and you can uh, hide your wine glass for a second. And then you're actually gonna come in here and you're gonna do the same thing with your wine inside, inside your object. So create a 96 sided circle, select it, then use the follow me tool to extrude this in a circle as well. So, and you can see what that did is that kind of created this with a whole bunch of different lines and that's probably due to the way that I drew it, but it's gonna be okay. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna reverse these faces um, just so that the correct side is facing out. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna erase this circle just like this. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hide our image in here and you can erase out these extra lines. You don't really need those anymore. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to apply a material to this. So um, same thing that we've always kind of done. We're just going to come in here and we're just going to come to the materials section of our tray. And uh, I'm going to pick this translucent glass gray in the glass and mirrors section. And uh, I'm going to go inside my materials, select all my faces, or inside my objects, select all my faces, and uh, go ahead and apply this material. So and you can see it looks a little funky with these lines in here, but that's okay. It doesn't really affect anything negatively. Um, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to hide this and then um, I'm actually going to come in here. I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to apply a kind of dark red like burgundy material. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to turn the opacity on it down to we'll call it 50% for right now. We'll see how that works. So then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to unhide my wine glass just like this. So you can see I've got this glass with kind of a liquid material inside of it. But remember when we work with Twilight Render, what you need to do is you need to come in here with the uh, Materials uh, Template Editor and uh, come in here and uh, apply some materials to this. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use the eyedropper to select this gray glass. I'm gonna come down to Templates and select Common. And then I'm gonna come in here for the bump and I'm gonna select SketchUp. Then I'm also going to come in here under advanced and I'm going to turn cast shadow off because we don't want our glass to cast a shadow. So that's the material that we're going to use for that. And then you can come in this drop down. This color A08 is the red. So you don't need to use the eyedropper. You can just find it in this list of materials that's in your model right now. So for that one, we're going to come in here um, and select, we're going to select a liquid water template just like this, and then we're gonna set the bump to sketch up again. And then we're gonna go ahead and do a test render. So we're gonna go ahead and close this, and then we'll just come in here and we'll just select this little green, um, this little green circle like this, and uh, just come in here, and remember this is Twilight Render's rendering window, um, and you've got a whole bunch of different presets in here. We're just gonna set this, we'll start on low plus and see what that spits out. And then just hit this play button to run a test render. All right, so in one thing I'm gonna wanna do 
um, is if you look at this image right now, if you kind of rotate around in it, you can see that all the little boxes in this object are, uh, they're, they're kind of still showing up. So what I mean is when you have both of these images or both of these objects showing, um, the faces kind of intersect and they do this kind of like weird thing where all the faces show up a little bit. Um, so it has something to do with when SketchUp has two different faces occupying the same space, then you get kind of this weird, um, this weird issue in here where those faces show up different than they would otherwise. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to come in here and we're going to cheat a little bit. And all we're going to do is we're going to scale this down. Um, just, uh, we're going to do a uniform scale. So you're going to hold the control key, which will make this a uniform scale around the center. And we're just going to scale this down to 0.99. So just enough that your faces, um, don't intersect anymore. So now if I come in here and I unhide this and I spin this around, you can see how I'm not getting that weird, um, face issue in here anymore. So you've got your material in here. Um, but then you don't have um, the backside of these faces kind of creating that distortion in your background. So, and this is exactly why we run test renders because then we can see that in our image. So if I run another test image on low plus, what this is going to do now is my liquid's going to look a lot more realistic and a lot less like pixelated and funky and stuff like that. You can see how this looks a lot smoother in here now. So um, and that's kind of what we're going for. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and uh, if you remember in the past what we've done, what we've done is we've changed our environment. So uh, right now SketchUp is treating this object um, like it's an object that's sitting outside and it's lighting it with the physical sky. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to ingest our environment. And uh, you're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to use a, a spherical sky. And a spherical sky is basically um, an image file that you can download um, in order to make the lighting look more like interior lighting or something like that. So instead of this lighting this with the sky color, it's going to light it with that image. And so what you're going to do is you're going to visit a website called Kirkathea, and I basically end up linking to this just about every week, but you're going to visit kirkathea.net, so K-E-R-K-Y-T-H-E-A, and you're going to go to the section labeled downloads, and you're going to go to the resources section. And what you're going to download is you're going to download um, you're going to download this uh, object that's or this uh, file called Studio Light by Rayman, and that'll come down as a uh, that'll come down as a zip file. And so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to download it, and then you're going to have to save it into a file where you can find it. And I have a folder um, in my SketchUp drive where I keep all of my uh, HDR skies and lights and stuff like that. But you're going to want to download that. And then once you've downloaded that, you're going to go to this background image drop down. You're going to hit select and you're going to click this little folder. And you're going to go find that file. So it's going to look like this. It's going to be the Studio Light by Rayman. And uh, there's going to be several different options in here for this. And we're going to go with the uh, boxlight.hdr, so the first object in here. So what this is going to do is you can see now how uh, this little preview here shows that little box image just like this. So basically it has this light that's reflecting off of the top of this uh, shiny object right here. And so now what that's going to do is when we come in here and we uh, render this object. So if I run a test render just like this on low, it's going to look different. It's going to look a lot more realistic. So the background's going to be kind of darker, but you're going to be able to see when you come in here that your glass looks a lot more realistic. And if I bump up the exposure on this, you may be able to see it a little bit better, but you can see how the liquid's reflecting better, the glass is reflecting better, all that different kind of stuff. And so now we've kind of got this glass working the way that we want it to work. It still doesn't show up very well, but we're going to mess around with that in a minute. Um, but next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're actually just going to draw a flat surface below this. And before that, I'm going to go ahead and save a copy of my model just in case something goes wrong so that I don't lose all the work that I've already done. 
All right, so now that we've got our glass kind of looking the way that we want, what we're going to do is we're just going to come in here and we're going to add kind of a base to this. And we're just going to do what we did before, um, where we just kind of create like a wood um, veneer base in here. So you're just going to create kind of a rectangle shape. And then you're just going to come in here and uh, you're going to apply, you're going to go to the material section, look under wood, and just select wood veneer one. And kind of take a look at it. If it comes in here and it looks all big and everything like this, you may need to come in here and edit the size. So I'm actually going to make this six inches. Um, and basically you're just telling it how often to repeat this texture. So um, if it looks too big or too blown up, just come in here and edit these until you like the way that those look. And so once you do that, um, you're just going to come in here. You're going to use your material editor to uh, basically apply a... Um, you're basically going to apply another template to this. So you're just going to go to template, wood, and you're just going to give it like a gloss texture. Go ahead and set the bump to sketch up. Just like this. Then once you've given it a gloss texture, come in here and do kind of a uh, medium. We'll just do one more test render is all we're going to do. And just see if we like the way that it looks. All right, so once you've come in here and you've run kind of your test render and you're happy with the way this looks, um, which I am, I'm probably gonna come in here and adjust the size of this a little bit. But otherwise, once you've done that, then you can just run this on your uh, preset number, uh, number nine or number 10, the interior progressive render, and just let it run for a while. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, I'm just gonna adjust the size of this. I'm gonna adjust the size of this object and probably give it a little bit of depth. so that this looks like it's kind of sitting on a wood table type piece. Um, so I'm gonna adjust the depth of that a little bit. Um, just kind of setting up my scene just like this. Um, I wanna have my glass kind of off to the side a little bit. So I may run this out a little further. You know, you may run one more test render if you want just to uh, make sure your scene looks the way that you want it to look, that your camera angle's right and all that. Okay, so generally I'm good with the way this looks, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop this render. Then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and uh, I'm gonna set this to the size of render that I want this to be. And then um, I'm just gonna set this on uh, preset nine or preset 10. Uh, I'm probably just going to put it on preset 9 and I'm just going to let it run for a while. All right, so now you can come in here and you can uh, save a copy of this image by clicking uh, save a copy right here. Um, and you can also go ahead and... Uh, you know, you can let this run for as long as you want with these interior uh, renders. I'm going to go ahead and stop this one right now. Um, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap this video up right here. I'm, I'm not super happy with the way that some of this stuff in here turned out, but this video is getting a little bit long. So I would just say that uh, probably you need to just come in here and play with this a little bit and uh, play around with getting the look that you like. You know, one of the, one of the things about uh, working with rendering is you do have to kind of trial and error things a little bit in order to get what you want. So um, anyway, uh, hopefully these are principles that you can kind of apply to what you're doing. So anyway, go ahead and leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you like this? Um, is there something you would like to see me do differently? I just love having that sketch up conversation with you guys. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new sketch up content every week. If you really like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Uh, every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month so that I can just keep bringing you great sketch up content. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.